Hello everyone. Um, welcome to this presentation, Troubleshooting Joomla Problems. My name is Peter Martin and I'm from Nijmegen. That's uh, about a 200 hour walk from uh, here in the Netherlands. And I have my own company, DB8. I create applications and a free application I recently created is DB8 Site Dev. It's uh, a free checklist that you can use for your website. Uh, when you want to go live, you have to check all kinds of things. And now you can do it with a checklist within your website. I'm also a Joomla volunteer. Um, one of the things I uh, do for a long time is uh, I'm one of the Joomla forum uh, moderators. And because of that, I know a lot of problems with Joomla. And that's my presentation about so, I will tell you something about troubleshooting in general. About the 10 most common problems found in Joomla. And I will show you some tools that you could use to solve problems. So, we live in an age of electronics. Uh, we all have televisions and the electronic devices. And with electronic devices, you have electrons and they can be unstable. And when you have a problem with your old television, you could slap it. Uh, not too hard, of course, because then you can crash it. But with devices, you can reset the device to get a, a stable, um, a stable uh, uh, mode again. So, I know it's not really common, and I should not really do this, but I have to make some... Um, I, I want, want to give some attention to this company. This is a really great company, it's called Ran Home Industries. And actually, I don't know what they do, but I have a couple of friends working over there. They're called Jen, Moss and Roy. And sometimes I don't know uh, solutions for problems that I see at Joomla Forum. And I can always call them. So first of all, troubleshooting in general. Um, with Joomla, what can go wrong? Well, everything which you can see here can go wrong. Uh, things on the, the web server and website itself. Things on the computer of the person itself. And also, of course, sometimes a domain name system things. So when you want to find solutions for your problems, you have to find to check everything, if everything is correct. And when you have problems, first make a backup, especially um, yeah, with, uh, with Akiba or something like that. And you have to know the differences between all the different extensions to find uh, the problem. And to find the cause, you have to check all the different change I just uh, told you about and you have to reproduce the error on another server like if you have a problem on, the, on your site try it on your local machine as well and change all the parameters uh, extremely like don't change it one pixel but uh, change maybe 10 or 20 pixels so you can see the differences um, oh yeah and if you don't know the problem um, you can always ask for help. I know there is in Germany, I mean a, a German forum somewhere where you can ask for help. Uh, you can also use a Joomla forum at joomlaforum.org. And if you ask a question, please use the right place, like, like the right board. Give sufficient information and also do like open source and thank for the help. So other people who uh, see your thank you no, they uh, you got helped. So extensions in general, there are five types of extensions: component modules, plugins, templates, and language files. And if you have to look into problems with components, you have to look at the URL structure because uh, in the URL structure you can see which component is running. Because it would say something like option is com underscore content. And it will be displayed in the template on a certain position where it says include component. Uh, modules work uh, with the item ID, which is the menu item. So if you have a problem on certain pages, um, first switch on uh, the module uh, positions in the template. And then uh, you could find uh, which template position you are uh, using. And that way you can find which module you Uh, 
plugins. You have to disable a lot of them and just enable them one at a time to see what problem, uh, what is the problem. Uh, with templates, um, you can have multiple templates, but one template on a page at a time. And if you run into uh, problems with templates, just switch to Protostar, the default Joomla template. And if the problem is, is also there, then it's not a problem, a template problem probably. And of course, uh, the language files, you can uh, use uh, language files. And this, if there are problems with uh, languages, just look in uh, the language overrides. So if you have a couple of components and modules and uh, plugins working together, it's something like this, the search of Joomla. Um, in Joomla, you can use a search module or a search component that has a sort of form field that you can fill out. And when you press enter, the component will process your request, but it doesn't know anything about the database structure. So there are uh, search plugins, and every search plugin, like have a content search plugin, a contact search plugin, they all know everything about their specific uh, database. And the result will be uh, also uh, a component. So now let's get to the 10 most common Joomla problems. The first one is the blank page. Who knows the blank page? Yeah, okay. So, um, the errors we see in Joomla are like this. Uh, an error after upgrade, my site is blank, etc. <coughs> and for the people who don't know the blank page, it looks something like this. <laughs> and, well, if I have problems like this, I most of the time I just call my friend. So let's call my friend Roy at the moment. Hmm, maybe he's on a coffee break. Hi Roy, this is Peter. Um, I have a problem with a blank page. What can I do? Have you tried turning it off and on again? Ah, that's a good point. Thank you. Reporting is off, which means you have to put it on, like uh, in php.ini or in Joomla itself. So in Joomla. You go to system global configuration <coughs> and then to the server tab and the error reporting should be to maximum when you have problems. And also on the server you have to increase the PHP error level. You can do it in the php.ini sometimes and most people can't and access. So the second problem, maybe this looks familiar as well. <laughs> so in Joomla you will see some things like I have these kind of errors like deprecated, uh, there's even one from J1.5 in it. And these kind of problems, yeah, what can you do about it? So I asked my friends again, and they told me, uh, I'm sorry, are you from the past? And, uh, okay, I know what they mean, because it's not really an error, it's a warning. Because some PHP functions that are used in extensions or in Joomla itself, uh, might be uh, deprecated, might be not used the next version. I mean, the PHP function itself, will uh, they will get rid of it. So you get a warning, please change this, because in the next PHP version, um, it will be an error instead. So you have to get it fixed. Uh, if you find these kinds of things in Joomla, it's very unlikely, but you use the bug. Meanwhile, you can hide it. It's not a solution, <coughs> but a workaround. And it should only be a temporary workaround. But you could do it like this, in the php.ini or in the HD access. Um, problem number three, 
It's called The Missing Class. Uh, you know about this one? <laughs> People have these kind of problems. And so I asked them, and I asked Jen. And Jen is head of IT, and she said that she had a good authority that if you type Google into Google, you can break the internet. Well, if you have problems with missing class, I recommend to do the first thing, like uh, go to Google and search for the error, but not too specific. Uh, remove uh, the part that says, uh, uh, that gives uh, information about the path on your server because it's too specific. Um, you could also re-upload the Joomla files, uh, download a zip file, unzip it, and upload everything except for the slash installation. Or, Joomla has a new feature, under component Joomla update, uh, you can uh, uh, check for updates and then reinstall the Joomla core files and hopefully it will solve the missing class. If it's a third party extension, just reinstall the extension, but create a backup first. Um, another problem, nothing changes. We see errors like this. And like the title, I, I, I change the title and it doesn't show or uh, something changes and I, I don't see it. Well, um, I, today I heard about uh, Joomla 3.7 in a presentation with Brian Tiemann. And there will be something uh, with the templates and uh, MD5 hash after it. So it will correct a lot. But you need to pretend to be normal people, yeah? Keep a conversation about things that would interest everybody. You know, nothing about memory or RAM. <laughs> memory is RAM. <laughs> so, memory is RAM, that's a good point. And cache is also memory. So, if you think about nothing changes, you have to start about looking into the RAM memory. So, first, refresh your cache. This week I had a customer and I uh, uh, made some changes in two of their websites and they complained, yeah, uh, you, you told us that uh, you changed something but I don't see anything. Okay, could you please do uh, Control F5? Oh yeah, now it works. <laughs> so they didn't refresh their browser cache. Um, something else, uh, some servers have server cache, like I think SiteGround has server cache. If you have problems over there, you should disable the server cache for a second or for a minute, just by uh, using something in the HD access. And also uh, empty Joomla's cache, of course. Furthermore, if it doesn't change, first I would recommend check where are you working. Um, I have to admit that <laughs> I have it a lot. I'm doing stuff, it doesn't work, it doesn't change. And then I, uh, after I have some coffee or tea, I find out, okay, I'm doing this stuff locally and I'm checking it on the server, yeah. So be careful with that. And also check template overrides. It ha a lot of problem problems are with template overrides. Go to your um, template folder, go to the HTML folder and just rename HTML to HTML uh, slash alt or something like that. If the problem is still there, it's not a uh, template override. And of course, switch off uh, the search engine friendly. So you can see the URL and also change parameters with extreme numbers. So uh, this is also a common problem. Menus don't work, etc. Oh, and something else. If you say urgent uh, in a forum, I think most forum regulars won't ignore you because your problem is not more urgent than other people's problems. So please avoid using these kinds of things. So if you have a 404 error, you have to think about, yeah, what does IT stand for? What does it stand for? Or what doesn't it stand for? So if you see a problem, what does the error number stand for? And you can look at Wikipedia. 400 errors are always client. And if mod rewrites on the server is on with the patch, you rename this file to htaccess. And if you rename it to htaccess and you get a 500 error, it's a server error. And then you have to disable the htaccess by renaming it to htaccess.txt again. 
And if the problem is solved, then you have a problem in your HT access. Another problem, really familiar, it's the account login. People can't log in into the back end. And, well, let's ask my friends at the IT crowd. <coughs> this is their boss, Dan Holm. Well, obviously, this is not the, the best solution to get into your backend again. But what you can do, uh, <coughs> first of all, check if administrator is available. If it's not available, then you might use a security extension or the website that needs a token behind the URL. Uh, you have KSecure, JSecure, Admin Exile, Admin Tools, and probably more. Uh, and if you install those, um, you can uh, prevent uh, people from accessing your administrator uh, because a lot of uh, bots try just uh, your administrator to find disable this extension temporary just by using FTP go to the plugin system and then to the plugin name and remove it uh, I mean rename it to something else you, you, you can get is not working, uh, you could create a new super user and you could do it via a By the way, I will uh, publish my sheets afterwards and you can click all the blue links so you can go to the documentation directly. Um, if it's still not working, the username password, then something else might have happened. Some people uh, disable plugins without knowing what they are doing. And if you disable the user plugin of Joomla or the authentication plugin, nothing happens. You are still logged in. But next time you try to log in, you have a problem. So go to your extensions table and check these, these two plugins. They should both be enabled. can't install a component or a template or whatever uh, yeah you get these kind of problems at the forum and if we ask Roy oh he's not available he's installing something so I have to find it myself so the first question you have to ask yourself is the specific extension or is it for all extensions if it's a specific extension it might be related to the extension itself and if you can't install anything, it's just your local, your, your own setup. So you could try uh, to install the same package on a local server. So install uh, WAMP, XAMP, MAMP, LAMP or whatever on your local system. And try to install it over there. If it works, it's probably server related. And something else, uh, if you have a zip file, uh, check it. If there is an XML file in it, or maybe the zip file says unzip first sometimes happen to me then you can't install and also check the permissions on the server um, check the PHP upload and also the available uh, disk space because that might also give a lot of errors a workaround might be uh, to put the stuff uh, in the TMP folder on the server and use install from directory um, another thing I see at the forum it's how can I remove this logo or whatever. Um, these are the questions you see. And um, I don't really know. They are not available at the moment, so I have to do it myself again. So, first of all, you have to analyze the page with the browser. For instance, uh, Google Chrome has an inspector function, or you can use Firefox, it has the same as well. And check the page and check uh, what you want to remove and I would use an IDE like PHPStorm which is a paid version if 
it's a module, um, you have to disable and uh, enable the module positions and put TP equals one or anything, uh, and you will see the module positions. Um, test it with the uh, default Joomla uh, template and with plugins, just disable the plugins and check your HTML template overrides. Um, the slow website. Some people have problems with their website, it loads slow. And these are the problems you read about the form. Um, this is what they might ask you. Have you find, tried to force an unexpected reboot? Hmm. I don't know what they mean. But anyway, um, you should analyze your database queries. So switch on Joomla's uh, debug mode and check the queries. And also, um, use YSlow. It's a browser add-on that you could install in your Firefox or uh, Chrome browser. And you can click on it on the website and it uh, shows everything, all the bottlenecks in the website. Um, of course, you could also uh, compare your uh, website on the server with your website somewhere else, like install it on a local machine. Just create a backup using Akiba and in, in restore it with uh, kickstart.php on your local machine and test it over there. If it's really faster, it might be a server problem. And also use cache. The final problem I see sometimes at Joomla Forum is this. And you see errors like this. I have un uh, unwanted adver advertisement or I see the Google search engine shows my website with Ch uh, Chinese or Japanese or whatever. And in this <coughs> case, when you get hacked, um, you should not do like Moss. Because the first thing you should do when you get hacked, you should not panic. But you should create, uh, you should first safeguard everything. Um, make sure you have old backups. So uh, if you use Akiba backup, uh, make sure you have the latest backups and also the oldest one and create a new backup of the hacked website. You need a, um, a backup of, of the, ha the hacked website. Just if you mess it up even worse, uh, you can restore it to, the, to that version. Or maybe you want to uh, find things, analyze uh, the hack. And for analyzing the hack, you also should uh, look at the server access log. Yeah. And when you analyze stuff, look at the Joomla version, at the third party extension version, and when you analyze the hacked files, uh, check, the base, uh, check the files if there is something like base64, evil decode, etc. in it. You could also scan your website using NeoPy. Uh, it's a Python script and it will show lists of most suspicious files. And the best thing you can do is in, uh, compare it with an original. So if you have a website that's got hacked, uh, you could create a backup of it. Create, uh, put it on your local machine and just install a clean Joomla next to it with the same uh, extensions and use melt and compare everything. And uh, you see all the changes that have been uh, made. And when you recover, do it on a local machine. Don't do it on the server because maybe you are uh, trying to recover stuff on the server and the hackers are still active. So it's like, yeah, it doesn't work like that. You better do it offline. And first solve all the problems in the website. Don't forget to change the Google sitemap because the problem with the Japanese or Chinese stuff is they probably changed your HD access. They added some files on your site. And if Google or other search engines with the HD access and the 410 uh, gone error. So, uh, yeah, you could do that to, to, to solve it. And finally, you have to inform a lot of people. First of all, actually, before you start doing all this kind of stuff, you should, if you have customers, you should inform the customer first because they have probably to pay for it. And also, don't forget to inform the hosting company. A couple of years ago, uh, one of my websites was, got hacked and when I informed my uh, hosting company, including the hacked, what they could check, 
Uh, a day later, they reported back, thank you. Uh, we uh, switched off 44 other websites that got hacked as well, using the same technique. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, last thing is the tools that you could use. The best tool you could use is Joomla itself. Um, with example data. So uh, if you have problems with your Joomla website, just look at uh, the default Joomla website. And also set a uh, uh, search engine friendly so you can see the a lot of information like uh, which PHP uh, version you have and all the settings in PHP but also the directory settings also uh, a lot of uh, third-party extensions you could use like if you have problems with ACL uh, I recommend ACL manager which is paid uh, software and also uh, Akiba admin tools. It's uh, very useful to look at uh, stuff like uh, uh, permissions, etc. Um, on the server, you could use uh, the log files to check for errors, the PHP error log, and also the HD access. You should look and maybe disable it to test. For the database stuff, use PHP my admin to, to look directly into the database. But if you are looking for something to change something and you don't know where to, to change it, create an SQL export of your database. Put this SQL export on your local machine. For example, uh, what you want to change is not in a file, but in SQL data. So you know where to, to change it. Uh, finally, use PHP Storm because it's really convenient to find um, the things I, I need to find. It has uh, syntax highlighting, so you uh, you can see things easily. Um, and finally, we have some things uh, for the HTML output like uh, inspector expect stuff like Google Chrome or Firefox. Uh, the web developer toolbar is can be really useful, especially when you are looking for stuff like cache. It has an option uh, which says something like uh, system page information or something like that. And it will show if the cache is on, etc. Wiselow is also very convenient. I know there are uh, websites Local web servers is really convenient and MELD, um, ELD. Um, it's a, a really convenient tool to, to check the differences between files. So, um, this is. Are there any questions? Nobody has problems? I can do problems as well. Yes? One missing thing on the cannot login. If you cannot access your administrator directory, sometimes you have a .ht access and .ht password in the administrator directory. Okay, yes, mm -hmm. good point. Um, and in that case, uh, you might get a pop-up, like you have to log in uh, first on a... Or you will get a 500 or 403. Ah, okay. If it's not compatible with your Apache version on your moving site. Yeah. So, uh, okay, check your HD access as well, always. Um, something else? Other questions? No? Okay, thank you for your uh, time. <laughs>